In this video, I'll show you the first step in the Experimental Airlines construction technique, which is pre-covering your foam board with packing tape. The foam board I like to use, which is most commonly available in North America, is Ready Board by R.L. Adams, commonly sold by and referred to as Dollar Tree Foam, but this is the label from it. There are also some versions in Europe. Uh, one that comes to mind is Kappa Line, and you can also use Depron as well with a few important other steps if Depron is what you can get in your part of the world. My packing tape of choice is this colored packing tape, and my favorite source is tapebrothers.com. Each of these rolls is 110 yards or 100 meters by two inches wide, and theoretically that's enough to cover 13 20 inch by 30 inch Dollar Tree foam board pieces like this on one side with a colored packing tape. However, with overlap, with cutoffs, waste, and errors, it really tends to be about 10 sheets that you can cover like this. Um, so it's quite economical and with a good variety of colors you can be very creative with the designs on your airplane. One of the advantages of using tape is its simplicity and ability to apply it with only minimal of tools, a measuring tool, a marker, any sharp blade, and a gift card or a similar squeegee type instrument, plus a soft cloth like a t-shirt or a soft lintless towel. There are monocoat type films which are adhesive um, and can cover a whole board in one piece, but they usually require some sort of heat implement like an iron. They're expensive and they're kind of tricky to apply. This tape is two mil thick, which is 50 uh, micrometers, and it's very light. It adds 20 grams of weight in a, an entire 20 by 30 inch sheet like this. Um, it adds a significant amount of um, tensile strength to the surface of the plane and the uh, airframe components. And of course it looks great and it waterproofs the plane in areas where you need that. So for a minimal amount of additional weight that adds a lot of positive qualities to your uh, Experimental Airlines style plane. Using this technique you pre-cover your foam board to create the arm and wing airfoil and the fuselage tubes which are the core of the Experimental Airlines construction technique. Now to start you'll need a work surface like this. This is my kitchen island and ideally you have a work surface that has a drop off on both edges. If you had one that was exactly 30 inches that would be great. This actually is a little narrower but it works okay. The next best thing is a workspace that's continuous up to a wall or a very long surface but has a drop off at the end um, and then the worst possible case, but still doable, is a, an infinitely long flat workspace, like a floor. It can be made to do, but it's a bit more challenging. Now before you start, try to ensure that your work area is free of any dust or debris. If you've been sanding any foam board, or in fact any material recently, go ahead and let that stuff settle out for a few hours so it's not in the air. If you have a dog, try and dust away any of the dog hair that you have up here. And if you live in a very dry area like I do in the desert, Think about wiping down your work surface your, and your um, foam board and your skin with an extremely very, very slight damp cloth just to disperse some of the uh, static that tends to attract all those particles. That way you'll get a nice clean finish when you lay down the tape without debris underneath the tape. The next question is which side of the foam board to tape? You'll notice when you buy this foam board, it often has some little ridges in it. Um, those tend to fold themselves out, if you will, once you construct the wing or the fuselage tube. So don't worry too much about that, although all things considered equal, if you have a perfectly flat piece of foam board, choose to apply the tape to the side that has fewer ridges. You'll also notice that the foam board is usually a little bit convex in one direction and concave in the other. And that doesn't matter as much. However, I'd recommend for beginners is start with the concave, that is the curved upside, up first. So when you apply the tape across, it contacts at this edge and at this edge and is bowed in the center so that it allows you to line it and then press it down as you go. With some practice it's actually preferable to apply the tape to the convex side with the, with the hump up in the middle if you will, although it's a bit of a commitment because as you apply the tape across it tends to stick as it goes in the middle. So if you're, once you're confident of your alignment go convex side up. Now the first thing to note when applying this tape is the starting point will be applied not to the foam board itself but to the work surface. And so I'm going to use this drop off here. It's useful to apply some masking tape or easily removable tape to this edge so that all the repeated pieces of packing tape you apply to it are easily pulled right off. Of note, the color in this packing tape is actually in the adhesive, not the substance of the tape. And so 
when it's peeled off, if there's any re residual um, adhesive, that will have the color. So you can potentially mess up your work surface with it. Now the critical limitation of this packing tape, although it's inexpensive, light, and looks great, is that it's totally inflexible in any, to any appreciable degree in any direction. Therefore, it must be laid down perfectly straight and flat. And so the key to that is starting with it in a more or less suspended state over the foam board in that straight state before it is applied. If you start what looks like straight and then try to wait, figure your way out as you go, it will invariably result in wrinkles which don't look good. So start with your foam board square up to the edge of your work surface here. And the critical step here is to start with the roll right along the edge here. You can go anywhere from about a third of the way down to about half of the way down. Any longer than that is not really necessary. And extend your tape out and apply that right to the edge as well. Now it's, it's touching the corner of the foam board itself, but it's really adhered to the work surface back here. So it's parallel to the edge here, parallel to the edge here. Now if you have a drop off on the other edge here, you can simply hold the foam board down, stretch it off, and notice how it remains flat because it's coming off the roll at a, at a straight angle. It can just be pushed directly straight down like that and smoothed out. Now if you do not have a drop off here, you'll need to use something with a straight edge like this to put the tape down. Don't try to use a finger because it'll invariably it'll wrinkle the tape. So I'll simulate what that would be like if I did not have this drop off is I would take the card, put it like this, guide the tape down right to the edge and push it down. Now it's best to set the tape, particularly at the long edges. You can do this with a finger or with a card. Just stick it down a little bit like that and like that. Now you can cut this tape off. And what I find is if you just slice it right off, if you have any static in the environment, this piece of tape will roll itself back up or stick to itself. So what I really like to do is just to cut it halfway like that, set down your cutting implement, then you can grab the tape like this. Start your next stripe or you can just put it someplace where it can hang out for a second. Now with that first tape stripe applied, I can kind of gently push it down and you can do it with your finger or with your gift card squeegee if you like. Get it down nice and flat. The overlap for ready board, foam board, is recommended to be about a quarter inch. For Depron, because the tension forces on the surface of the Depron when you bend it are gonna be greater, I recommend about a centimeter or about half an inch of overlap. So the next row is done the same way. Place the roll down directly where you want it, about a quarter inch overlapping, give or take your choice and then place the tape down in the same analogous location at the end of the foam board, adhering it to the edge of your work surface. And, then it down. and you notice it should be straight. Now if you detect any undulation or wrinkles, because we've stuck this tape to the work surface and not to the foam board yet, you can maneuver this a little bit side to side so you can get the tape to lie down nice and flat and then gently smooth that down so that there are no wrinkles and then you can give it that final squeegee taking care to particularly push down right at the edges where that cut's going to be so it doesn't tend to peel up. Repeat that at the opposite end. Cut halfway, take that off, start another one. Now I've done a whole piece here in about four minutes. Uh, that's with some practice. Your first one will probably take you 10 or 15 minutes and it'll work down to four or five minutes after the first few that you do. The next step, once you've ensured that everything is smooth and stuck down, particularly along the edges here and here, is use a smooth, lintless, soft cloth, like a t-shirt works great. And then just rub down pretty firmly to set it all down so it sticks really, really well to the paper underneath. If you have an overhang like this, be sure you don't lean into that and bend your foam board down. So I'm going to save that part for a minute. And then because this is still uh, stuck to the work surface over here, I'm just going to lift it up a little bit like that and just cut that part off pretty close to the edge and then flip that around and then 
finish setting down this piece. Now you can see the finished product. Not a perfectly consistent overlap, but with some practice you can decide on an overlap that works best. Never less than eighth of an inch. A quarter inch is generally sufficient, uh, except in Depron I would go at half an inch or a centimeter or so. So that's all set down. This can be covered on one side for fuselage tubes, or you can cover both sides if you're making a horizontal and vertical stabilizers or other parts that you need both sides covered. But you may wish to apply a two-tone tape for a different color upper and lower surface to your wings. Now I'll show you how to apply the tape for a two-tone wing like this. This is the five inch airfoil cord, which is a five inches from the leading edge of the nose to the hinge here. Plus, I like to use a one and a half inch control surface, but that's variable and up to you. The first step is to apply the tape on the lower surface of the wing, and it will go from the leading edge at this color transition to right here. For the five inch cord, that is three strips of tape. So apply those first to your foam board. So with nominally two inch tape, which is actually just a tiny bit less than two inches and overlapped about a quarter inch in the center, you'll notice that gives five to five and a half inches uh, for the lower surface of the wing. So a little bit of this length you'll lose as you bend up the camber. So that's perfect for the lower surface. Notice that the forward piece of tape overlaps, the middle overlaps the trailing. So this provides the best possible scenario as far as aerodynamics. As well as if you hit any debris, it tends to lay the tape down better rather than catching up under the edges of the tape. Now I'll lay down the tape on the upper surface of the wing the same way, but because we want it to overlap in that direction, we need to start here and apply back towards the leading edge. Now it is an option just to lay down your second color from here and then just continue back. However, for the best possible aesthetic effect and aerodynamics and durability, I recommend starting your upper surface from the trailing edge and working back to the leading edge. For the five inch airfoil cord, measure out seven inches. And if you were making a seven inch airfoil cord, measure out nine inches and that'll be your starting point to lay down your upper wing color back to the leading edge of the wing where it will be when folded here. Now I've measured seven inches here and seven inches here and I'll start my first tape stripe from this point back. Now for applying this in this middle of the board where there's no edge to reference off of, you'll either want to trace this line all the way down or you'll just take your tape and stretch it all the way out the full length like that. Tape it down there and then at the opposite end and then gently smooth that down. Continue to apply these, being very careful to be consistent with your overlap. Don't overdo it or underdo it, or you'll run short without enough tape to meet up with your lower surface color here. Oh, wow. wow, wow. So there's your final result. Your upper wing color, I've chosen red. Lower wing color, yellow. And when I fold this up, this will be a five inch arm and wing ready to put on an airplane. Right, Ainsley? Yes. Yeah. Yay. Maybe an Ainsley Peace drone? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now, applying the tape to Defron is much the same way, except I recommend being pretty liberal with the overlaps. I used about a half an inch or a centimeter overlap just to provide extra security when the Defron is bent. There's a lot more tension because it's just a much stiffer, more substantial foam. Also pre-clean the surface with some isopropanol or some uh, ethyl alcohol just to remove any of the residual manufacturing lubricant from the extrusion process. Now that you've pre-covered your foam board, you're ready to construct your fuselage tubes and arm and wing and get creative and make some fun planes. So have fun. Bye. Say bye. <laughs>